Can I watch the salvation of the Lord be manifested in my life? Can I watch him move mightily on my behalf? Will I stand? Will I stand the heat? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to look 14 generations later from where King Jehoshaphat was. We're going to look 14 generations later. And I praise God for those who pray for us back in the day. Hallelujah. They pray for their lineage. Hallelujah. Somebody pray for you when you didn't even know great, great, great grandmama name. I don't know her name, but she prayed for her family and she prayed for her seed. Hallelujah. She prayed. My granddaddy, my great, great, he, he prayed. He un- interceded for me. And I believe that when King Jehoshaphat, when they stood, hallelujah, something happened in the lineage. Yes, they went through a lot. But there was the deposit that was made. And we're going to look at that this morning. Amen. Let's look at Daniel chapter 1. I'm a little country, y'all, so bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we do have some rocky roads out there in Rocky Four. Okay, I'm going to say that. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 3 and 4. And Sister Rachel, you can read. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding, science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. The king was looking. He was looking for some children, some children of God who had these gifts, who had favor from God, who had, who had understanding and had knowledge and have wisdom. And he wanted to use that for his kingdom. He wanted to, to show them the ways of the Chaldeans, these idol worshipers, these soothsayers, these enchanters, these astrologers. He wanted to use their gifts and taint it for the mess that they do. For the mess that they do. Now how many know that the enemy tries to do the same thing? The very anointing that we have. The very gifts that we have. The enemy will try and use it for his glory. But we got to make up in our minds that you can't use me devil. You cannot use me in the kingdom of of darkness. You cannot use me in the kingdom of hell and try and glorify your kingdom. God has created me in his image. Hallelujah. I have a right to walk in the destiny that God has given me. Hallelujah. But the king, the king, the king of this world, the devil, Satan, he has people out and about looking for God's people, for God's anointed to use them for the kingdom of darkness. And we need to keep our eyes open and make sure we don't let the enemy use us because he will do it in a hot second. He will do it in an instance. If you look away from God for one moment, you don't know where you might be. You don't know what the devil might do. He will take you out in the twinkling of an eye. But we have to watch and we have to pray because the devil wants to get in. He wants to get in. The king said, go look for some people. Go look. The children of God. Find those that are good to look at. Those that have good understanding, those that are wise, those who who can move in their gifts and in the anointings that God gave him. Hallelujah. The world knows that God's children have favor. 
the world knows, hallelujah, that, that God's people have benefits. And I tell you that the enemy will send leeches to attach itself to you and drain you and take you out, take your joy, take your peace, take your understanding, take everything that the, that the Lord has given you. He will try and take your healing. He'll try and take your sound mind. Come on, somebody. What has the world tried and take from you? What has it tried to take from you? What has it tried to take from you? Hallelujah. The world trying to take my mind, take my sanity. Hallelujah. The world trying to take my peace and my understanding. The world will try and take your gifts. It will try and take the things that God has given you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I praise God that these young men, they stay humble. That's a key in this message. We got to stay humble because pride will take you out. Pride will get you out of the will of God. Pride will tell you that I can do all the things, all the gifts, all the provisions that God has given me. I can work those things on my own. But how many know that pride got Satan, got Lucifer kicked out of heaven? Okay, that was the beginning of it. Pride. Pride. We need to examine ourselves. Yeah, you got a gift. Yes, God uses you. But you ain't all that. God is all that. God is all that. The Holy Ghost is all that. Jesus is all that. Hallelujah. We got to get out of our flesh because the king of this world is looking for you. He is watching. He is waiting. He is walking. Hallelujah. Seeking whom he may devour. He sure has found some folks in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. If he has tricked and deceived pastors and bishops and all these people in such a high level in God, they were anointed. They walked in their ministry. They walked in the gifts that God gave them. But they started looking at money. They started looking at fame. They started looking what people were saying about them. And they wanted more. And they wanted more. And they wanted more. They wanted that pride fed. They wanted it fed. You ain't got to say that I preached a good message. You ain't never got to tell a child of God that they preached a good message.